to Girls Talk, A Candid Conversation. We are having a very interesting and risque conversation today about sexual fluidity and the diversity of sexual orientation today. Damn, that was a mouthful. That was yeah. a mouthful. It was. Ah, it it was. was. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, it seems like today, um, sexual fluidity and bisexual can i ask a question yes what is sexual fluidity um the ability to become aroused by the same sex as uh, well as the opposite sex is that a true definition <laughs> no, I don't know. so what's I mean, the difference between bi and fluid hold on, hold on, hold well, on. listen i could say this okay the definition i have it right here okay so what is the read, like read. Read. sexual fluidity is defined as the capacity of for situation dependent flexibility in sexual responsiveness responsiveness which allows individuals to experience changes in same sex other sex desires over both short term and long term. So are you period. flexible when the partner changes? No, okay. I don't know. Okay. No, 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 I don't know much about you. I don't know. What I got, <laughs> sexual fluidity is changing or the ability to see if within yourself, if you want to be a. No, no it's as you said, being aroused. It's so aroused. You are able to get aroused. If you are That's able to be aroused so by your women, fluid. as well as men, <laughs> and. Well, I am sexually unfluid. <laughs> study that came out mm -hmm. at the University of Utah mm -hmm. okay. and they found that women are more sexually fluid That's than nice. men which I don't think anybody is surprised by no, no. Um, but <laughs> let's, it depends on where they work <laughs> let's I want to go kind of round table Monique oh wow <laughs> Because yes. you're well, the corner. Because you're the corner. Because you're the corner. Because you're the corner. Because you're the corner. Nobody could say that. What <laughs> are. Let me know mm. how you feel about sexual fluidity in your own life. Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying this. I am probably the most conservative of the bunch Fair in enough. how I perceive this um, subject and topic. So I'm going to say that. As I stated, I am sexually unfluid. If by definition, if it's um, the arousal by not just your sex, but also other sexes. No. Yes. Are we talking about both yes. sexes. Both sexes. Both sexes. Both sexes. <laughs> well, both sexes. Yes. Your sex. primary sex and the secondary okay. sex. Okay, 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 okay. So now that we have clarity. <laughs> um, my sex, I'm not aroused by. Mm -hmm. I'm aroused by the other sex, <laughs> which, other sex. which is defined as. Yes, please. Why, as 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 sex. Sex. Why are you being so cagey? It's either a man or a woman. I'm not going to answer the question. Okay. okay. All right. You have the floor, man. All right. You have the so, floor. so, again, if we're going strictly by definition, mm -hmm. that, that Radhika read, then I would categorize myself as being sexually unfluid. Okay. 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 Kim? Oh, absolutely. I'm absolutely unfluid in this standpoint. Yeah. Not saying that I'm like judgmental towards others exactly. who are yes. in any means. Like my, I have best friends who've been, I keep 
been best friends since shit. Yeah. Like 2008. And they just got married like two years ago. Like I have two female best friends mm-hmm. who are lesbians and one's a lipstick lesbian and one's not. And I, I rock and roll with it. Yeah. I think they're amazing people. And a lot of people don't understand how I can be so conservative and like have such close friends that are sexually and fluid. Likewise mm-hmm. with me. Family members. Yes. Um, friends like there's no judgment no um and i and i think that's where a lot of people differ like you can you can experience and have what you want to have and also i can want the something, something different different and we can still be vibing together and be friends mm-hmm. because yeah that has nothing to do with the friendship like right. what you do like i i call it your booty business what you yes. do mm-hmm. with your in your personal time with your own personal body is between you and yourself and your partner or partners mm-hmm. or yeah. partner you want to. That's not my business. That has nothing to do with me yeah. and, and our relationship and how we interact with, with each other because I'm not having sex with you. Exactly. You know? All right, Karina, so, how do you feel about this? This one's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay. I'm curious. Who this is? By the standard definition, you are sexually fluid if you are aroused by either and or men and women. Mm -hmm. By that definition, I would consider myself sexually fluid. Now, does that make me gay, bisexual, or lesbian? I don't think so, no. I've never slept with a woman, but I've definitely had encounters where, if I'm honest, there was a sense of arousal. Now, has that made me gotten into um, sexual activity no so that's also a very weird line because by the standard definition Mm -hmm. i would agree that it is very easy for a woman to be aroused by both sexes now again here's here's how this unbalanced thing even started society dictates what is supposed to be passe and what's supposed to be normal Mm -hmm. and so maybe part of the challenge too in looking at defining or identifying whether you're sexually fluid or not is because you're looking at or thinking about what society says you are supposed to be or what the mores are (coughs) of family and the mores are of friends and how they're going to perceive me and all of this so in my mind i mean it's kind of like saying okay um do you ever go into a store and be like man I could shoplift that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been. Am I gonna shoplift it? No. It ain't coming with me. It's staying right there. But in my thought, maybe. Yes, of course. If I'm honest, yes. Um, and so I think, but of course, again, the Moray in society is it's bad. You shoplift. You're thinking about shoplift. You're being a shoplift. It's kind of like I go back to God forbid my mother watches this. And if she does, who gives a rat's ass? But it's like I'm thinking, oh, if my mother, she's like, what? Did you say you're sexually fluid? Huh? Like, well, what difference does that make? So I think what you're voicing, what I'm hearing, is that you have had curiosities. Mm-hmm. No, and it's not even curiosities. I have been in situations where I have been aroused by okay. them. Now, do, will I go into the, the details and say, oh, it was me being curious? No. That is like for a whole different discussion for a whole different day. Okay. But I've not been curious about it. Now, I will say this. If my significant other decided, hey, do we, you know, add on another woman? Is that something I would consider? If I'm... <laughs> 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 Oh, you wanted to chime in. Got it. Girl. Girl, she didn't make anything like my parents are coming for me. Like, girl, stop. She had the door. You're going straight to hell. (laughs) That's right. I I had a guy ask me, like, okay, so would you um, be okay with introducing, you know, other people into the situation? I'm like, um, Mm -hmm. no. (laughs) Um, Absolutely not. And I was like, wow, you, you would be surprised at, I think we had this conversation how many men are interested in bringing another partner 
into the situation. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a no no. Mm -hmm. It is a no. It is a hard no. Because let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Yes. So say if we introduce, <laughs> let's say if we introduce like, another mm. male to the situation. They would not go for that. And homeboy mm -hmm. is. You may be gay. Hold on. Let me go. I'm going to take this from her. Okay. And homeboy. Hold on. Hold on. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. Yeah. One second. One second. We, we need to keep it going. So, okay. Come on. So, um, and he is doing things that you can't do. That's going to be an issue. <laughs> For you, no, but not for me. Because I'm good. I mean, I'm good at the really situation. It's going to be an issue for him because how can you honestly see me being pleasured in a different way that you cannot buy someone else and be okay with it and not be like, I saw the way you were. You <laughs> didn't do that with me. What was that about? And then vice versa. I think I'd be the same way. Like, oh, really? Oh, so this is what we're doing. Right, so to keep myself um, from going to jail and doing all this stuff, you know, no, I do not. I think that is an intimate thing between two people. Mm -hmm. And again, this is my perspective. This is how I feel about the situation. You I guys the may, way. you guys mm -hmm. may differ and feel another way, but this is just for me personally. It's okay. okay. Don't worry, I'm Radika. Here, though, how do you feel, feel about I'm sexual fluidness? Um. Okay. She was just talking and I was like, let's turn into a recap. Sure. Okay, well, when it comes to sexual fluidity, I guess, unfortunately, maybe I would say I'm maybe a little fluid because if it is truly based on arousal, then yes. Because let's be honest, most of you guys, if not all of y'all have watched porn. Okay, so let's go there. Now, are you telling me like none of y'all watch lesbian porn at all ever in your life? Like, I don't watch porn, period. I really don't. Okay, either. good for you. You're an anomaly. <laughs> no, do you watch porn? Me too. <laughs> Damn, okay. Well, Lana, do you watch porn? Because I'm assuming the answer is. Lana, I'm tired of that too. There are research and studies that show that women tend to be aroused usually through audio, yes. sometimes through those noises and those sounds. So, Let's be real. If most women can get aroused based on just the sound and those pleasures, you, you're, it's still a female sound that you're hearing. So, but you're splitting hairs now. No, but no, I'm just, but, but I'm getting to the definition. Yes. If we're talking straight definition, mm -hmm. then yes. Because like if we're based on that, then then what? And my problem with society is that because that's how you feel, you're going to twist it and make it fit to where your narrative everyone yes. is sexually oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, there's a difference between sexual fluidity and sexual orientation. I got yes. that. So that's the we thing. I think so. That. Yeah. No, but I think that's where we're getting confused because the sexual orientation is it's your different. selected it's preference, in which I am heterosexual, yes. bisexual, um, Gay, homosexual, lesbian, whatever, whatever the case is. Yes. That yes. is my question. Exactly. But when it comes to sexual fluidity, it comes to what arouses you. That's so right. does it mean that you are aroused by just general, whether it's male or female? That's what it talks about. But I also think it's but to I be also aroused. Think it's, yes, and I, but I also think where this is going is not just the capacity to be aroused, but acting upon that arousal. But so that's not sexual fluidity, right? It is taking that further. fluidity mm -hmm. into, like she action. said, the stage of actionable orientation. Mm -hmm. I now act mm -hmm. upon this fluidity or this feeling that I have, and this is now my sexual orientation. Which is what she said she wouldn't do. She mm -hmm. said, exactly. I may be aroused by a woman, but I would never act on that. Yes. Or I haven't not, yet. Or I haven't yet. Clear. Because or that's not what she, she's, that's not where she's at. Well, that's, that's okay. Right. Right. Donna, I have to hear your answer. Okay, man. I feel my old eyes. <laughs> I, and I don't know why, honestly, because I'm probably going to disappoint you. No. No. Actually, I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why. So... So I think the very fact, so definition, mm -hmm. screw definition, the very fact, because I, I read the article mm -hmm. um, and the article is trying to explain the difference between fluidity and bisexuality, mm -hmm. that they the are not, that they are not the same no. thing. So in, in layman's terms, for me, fluidity is ability to feel the feels and think the thoughts. Bisexuality is actually living it, acting it, breathing it, yeah. being it. Yes. You know, so there is very, there is actually no fine line. Do you get excited when you look at the 
Christian Dior bag that just came out. That's like, <laughs> her, you know, I can like, like you, you know. Right now. I mean, this on. is like, yes. you, you get excited yeah. by, by this like pair of shoes that just like, you, yes, you know, do you get excited by, by steak? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're hungry. Or a sexy I mean, woman weary. That's you where know? I'm going. Like, yes. like, do you see a woman that like, that just like, what a, her outfit, just, you just. You or just her body. Go, like, I'm drooling her way. The, the way she looks at, this is being fluid. You know, she looks hot. That looks yeah. hot. You know, this, this is what it to me. Have you ever, I mean, like, maybe somebody had a fantasy or a dream. Did they act on it? Maybe, maybe not. That's none of our business. Mm-hmm. But that's being fluid because it may or may not happen. So I'm going to okay. circle back to Monique. Mm-hmm. But then and we're talking about arousal. So, no, but no. that's a type of arousal. That is what it said. So I can okay. see a woman and say, oh, she's so pretty. That doesn't mean that I'm feeling but all it's this maybe stuff you, down you here. Didn't, you did not find it arousal. to yourself in, no. in that way. So I want to fit, I want to bring it somewhere with this. So... There are different types of arousal, mm-hmm. but all of them release endorphins in your brain. Going down there is, is already getting that physical component. Have I looked at something or been in a situation where I was like, really? I'm feeling something here. <laughs> Did it ever get anywhere? Absolutely not. I'm not, go- I'm not going to. I love men. Mm-hmm. Always <laughs> have, always been. Say it on the camera. <laughs> she said on camera. But. I'm a, little, I'm a little bit older than you guys, and I have been in conversations and situations, mm-hmm. and you know, and that I've learned that a lot of guys, and I'm going to bring this actually because I'm going to answer where, where, where you were, you know, what you were talking. A lot of men have this perception that all oh, women are bi curious. Mm-hmm. This is the phrase that's, that's, curious, being, that's no, being yes, thrown yes, yes, yes. out without it. knowing it's that without it. knowing and many of them get really turned on mm-hmm. by just talking about this mm-hmm. with you. But they will never act on it. They don't want it. Mm-hmm. It is scary. If it's scary for, for all you, the it's you even scarier because mm-hmm. now he has to do double performance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or at least you, you know because, <laughs> because like you know, it's terrifying, but it's fun and it's edgy and it's mm-hmm. to talk about, talk about this and also push that boundary mm-hmm. to find out that do I really want this person? Oh, no, you are enough for me. Mm-hmm. But are you accepting and entertaining to anything? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you accept me as a whole package? That really comes down to a psychological acceptance. Mm-hmm. Now, now, then, you know, we can have, like, like, this should have been a two-hour session. Yeah. This is yeah. actually yeah. 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 Okay, so, 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 the actual, um, so, okay, the guy that I was just, I'm, I'm just mm-hmm. going to be, be very brief with this, but he was like, okay, what was the reason, you know, that your marriage didn't, you know, was it infidelity? I was like, you know, I'm not going to get into this with you, but <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, okay, so. Was it because you were suppressing his natural desire to be with other women? Why would you even go there? Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me. So then I was like, hmm. I was like, okay. So, um, so what are you saying? What are, like? What is it that you're saying? He's like, well, you know, people have a natural desire to be with more than just one person, even if they love you. Like they want to, like you know, explore the possibility of being with someone at else. a time at that, that time or someone else. Like in, in the same time is what you're saying, or just at the same time, or just in general. So then okay. I was like, okay, so in then general. you need to not be married, yeah, exactly. or not be in a monogamous, or not be in a monogamous or not be in a monogamous relationship yeah. because. Mm-hmm. You know, because like if we're talking about like sexual fluidity, I think that even goes along with it too. Like wanting to mm-hmm. be with multiple people. Like mm-hmm. there's like the definition is so broad. I think that's my issue. Like yeah. it's a broad definition that kind of encompasses um, a lot. So it does. It, yeah. So it, do, it, it actually it really does. describes type of behavior. That's mm-hmm. right. Or the capacity of exactly. humans to expand and to experience Long-term and feel and more than just what is in front of you, yeah. essentially. That is true. Do, do they act on it? No. You don't have to know. It's no. like also saying, hey, have you ever felt like you wanted to kill somebody? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> Every time today, I will yeah. kill you with my words and my looks. I'm going to kill you with my words and my looks, but sometimes you're like, man, I could share this. <laughs> but am I going to murder somebody? Yeah. No, right? It's 
it's the same thing. That feeling does not always translate into the action or the act becoming the consistent exactly. thing. And that's the well, thing. Well, I think it, this is actually like becomes controversial topic just yes. because it has word sexuality. Yes. It, it, yes. It, that's obviously. it. You just throw word sex into anything. And it can be, and we can be talking about eggs mm. the moment they become like sex is crumble <laughs> eggs. It's already taboo. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Okay, yes. so why is that? Why? Yes. yes. Why? Okay, now I'm going to say this. Nice. I had, I, I taken a, um, I can't remember, anthropology class and the professor broke it down really, really good. She's like, okay, everyone poops, everyone pees, everyone does those things basic that functions. are basic functions, basic bodily functions. Except women. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. So, and so then she also threw in as well as sex. We have sex appropriate, right? To populate the earth, you know, and mm -hmm. also oh, for sure. pleasure. Yeah. But those things are the most taboo mm -hmm. topics. If somebody farts, oh my gosh, that's like a big thing because those are things that are like anything that has to do with your genitals, your butt, or whatever, it's considered private. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're private parts. Yes, <laughs> yes. I just have to understand, women do not fart. They need <laughs> perfume. Oh my God, <laughs> let's stop this bull crap. <laughs> let's be on balance with it. No, we fart, yes, and we sometimes fart. it's shame. Sometimes it's not like spoiled milk. Okay, All right, so. Hang on, we need, we, need, we need to get back on track here. Yes. Hang on a second. <laughs> hang on, no. All right, girl, come on. And so, 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 Speaking about the, or the, the no, the, the taboo, the sex, it should not, because it's something that we all do, mm -hmm. right? So it should not be as taboo as it is if you're doing it with a male, if you're doing it with a female, if you're doing it with three people, if you're doing, doing it with four but people. why is it? Why is it? Because mm -hmm. that is what we have put. I think a lot of it has to do with, and I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, like the whole biblical thing. Yes, mm -hmm. it's religion based. Um, so, so um, if you're like a Christian or if you have like any type of religion, Catholic, Catholic, it speaks <laughs> about <laughs> having one person yes. as a partner. Mm -hmm. So then when you get outside of that, then even like sex before marriage and mm -hmm. um, whatnot. So when you get outside of that, then that's when it becomes something that is, oh, taboo or, oh, like mm -hmm. you're not a good girl if you, you know, have sex before marriage or you're like, if you are gay or if you like girls and you're a girl, then it's something wrong with that. So I think that is where the taboo. That's guilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, guilt. It, it's ancestral guilt. Mm -hmm. It's ancestral guilt because what I consider guilt today, you think my mother considers that guilt? She probably thinks that something's going to happen to me and I'm going to be burning, okay? <laughs> and I'm serious. And I mean, and, 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 I mean, does it matter? Okay, so and then, you know, so no, then it when we look at it from a perspective of sin, mm -hmm. right? Because that is what a lot of people kind of categorize okay. that as being a sin. So there are other sins like lying or stealing or whatever that, 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 that are the same. But we look at like sex and how we relate to sex as being a higher sin than all the others. So then it's like, oh, my gosh, like I was I was raised in the church. Like, oh, my gosh. And sex if you had sex, if you got pregnant, if you had sex before you, whatever, you were like the biggest sinner. But I was like, damn. So you over here talking about this person, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're stealing from the church, you're doing all this. But me wanting to, you know, enjoy have, some coitus, enjoy some coitus, um, <laughs> then now that makes me a bigger sinner than you. Or if you want to think about this little, um, this this little boy who's feminine who is mm -hmm. exploring his sexuality people are going to browbeat him and make him feel like he is you know a bigger sinner than the person who's lying or stealing and continuously and continuously lying. the yes. only thing about that is that we can see your issue we mm -hmm. can't see yours because you're hiding yours. okay mm -hmm. now i want to kind of stick to the study which one of the things it said was that women are more likely to be sexually fluid than men. And I think a lot of us know that a lot of us have experienced men 
saying that two women together mm -hmm. is it's hot, mm -hmm. it's sexy. But when you when you ask that same man about two men being together, they are repulsed by it. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Me but so is it societal? Is it is it specifically gender based? I think it's your own personal preference. Honestly, I think it varies. <laughs> I think it's something to say. say. <laughs> it's social. Yeah. It's society. But I think it's your own personal like. Yeah, but so my preference, preference may not be your preference. True, but so I think the bigger be the bigger overarching thing is society looks at two women a little bit better. It's it a little is. Really Lisa, good. Which is what I'm And society say looks at two men, but not even that. A man admitting that he is even interested in that idea. But it's society like, again. I know, but even not just even that just thinking about it is already like that is like Ooh. exactly yes. like you get ex exiled. Yes. Like you are somebody no one wants to touch, nobody wants to talk to, dot dot dot. But if a female says it, it's okay because it's trendy. Oh, it's sexy. And, or it's she's just curious. Exactly. It's okay. She's just enjoying mm -hmm. her sexuality. But when a guy does it, it's like, oh well, uh -huh. something's wrong with him. Now he's playing on another That's team. That's true. But I can see it. I can see it. In the point. last let's say 30, 40 years, sexual fluidity has really come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Where in the early 80s, you didn't talk about mm -hmm. being bisexual or gay no. as much as we would today. Yes. I feel like now your sexuality, a lot of people allows it to define them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so why is it? Why is it that 40 years ago, it was, it wasn't talked about, it was bedroom talk. You left it in the bedroom, but now it's all out in the open for everybody. I think it was just as prevalent then though, as it is now. I just think that people thought it was more of a taboo then to even speak on it. Well, it still it. is. But what we're forgetting is that today we are living in the information age. Mm -hmm. True. And this is only going to accelerate with the next generation. Is this why you keep clicking? No, no, no. no. She's I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. She's not agreeing with you. And this yes. is only going to accelerate with the next generation. So your yeah. kids, by the yeah. way, just be know this. Your kids are even going to be more advanced mm -hmm. as it concerns sexual orientation, sexual fluidity, mm -hmm. and all of those. Sexual fluidity has definitely, I think it's become trendy mm -hmm. now. It is because of the information age that you talked about, Kari, and just media in general, it is being, in a way, force-fed to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, absolutely. But also, so, that's not just it. No, it's not just that. There are two parts to it, right? There's the information age. Mm -hmm. So now this information is very much, much more obvious and in our faces and being said to us. But the second part, which is kind of the part where this entire thing was founded on is the acceptance of people as they are. Mm -hmm. That has now become a much more um, in the moment, more on trend, more immediate need because you also have post COVID so many people who've committed suicides, mm -hmm. so many people who have mental health issues, right? And so you're seeing this entire movement about acceptance. Right. And with acceptance, it means acceptance in all forms, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. however you are, whoever you are. So and then because you have the information age and you now have I mean, look at what happened even with George Floyd. Right. That entire it's like exposing an entire layer of systematic discrimination that used to exist so much in a vacuum behind closed doors. Because nobody knew it was going on. No, people knew it was going on. It just, it wasn't, wasn't in their face. That's right. It wasn't mm -hmm. in their faces and people felt afraid of bringing those things to the forefront for backlash. Mm -hmm. So now guess what? The information age does to everything. Mm -hmm. It shines a light on everything. Mm -hmm. And so everything is now accelerating. Everything is accelerating. And so now we are having to deal with, okay, this is happening more. It's not that it's happening more. It's just that we weren't really privy to it. I mean, sex tapes being exposed. Know, you know, we weren't even thinking about that, right? I mean, you knew it, but you weren't thinking about it. And so now life is saying to us, everything is, is enlarged and we have to look at it and go, we have to accept more things because as a society, should we, should we not? That's a whole nother discussion, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> it is a whole nother discussion. That's a whole nother discussion about acceptance and what we're accepting. But then how do you turn it off? 
And that's the big question because now we've been so accepting of so many things. It's opened so many doors. Mm -hmm. Where do you close the door? And where do you, where do you make that it? Where do you make the boundary, Where right? is it? Yeah. Boundaries. Boundaries. And boundaries are important, <laughs> okay. especially in talking about this. So this is actually on topic. So you said about closing the door. So now it's because we are accepting so much. So now I said, okay, so pedophilia exactly. is a... Um, is a sexuality. I enjoy. I it's a sexuality. There are. There are. There are. There are. Wait a second, guys. This is actually a sexuality. Wait a second. 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 Wait if People you are, are born, saying that this is a this is uh, a sexual born, orientation. If you are born with yeah, the same sex, if you sexuality. are born gay, if that is how you're born, that's how God made you. Well, God made certain people attracted, attracted to, to children. children. And so I then, say, again, that is a slippery that. slope. Exactly. So hold on. Again, so in this age of acceptance, and we're accepting <laughs> everything, so then oh, it opens the door for a yes, bunch of foolishness. <laughs> it opens exactly. the door for a bunch of foolishness, like saying that it is okay. Oh, I was born to want to sleep with a, a child. minor, yeah. a child. Okay, so Karee, so you see how outraged you are about that? But there's well, a difference. I, there's on, a difference. But, but there's then, not. hold on, hold on, wait. But the point is, is that when you open the door to certain things, then you cannot control what comes, what comes in out or in. You're opening uh, out of the door. Box. And I beg to yes. differ. I beg to differ. When you open your front door, are you trying to tell me that if a bum off the street comes up to your door, you cannot control the fact that he walks through the door? Kareem, listen. No, but the point is that once you open that door to society, you have all different kinds of people with Who all different their, yes. with all different ideas. Everybody yes. wants and, rights. So and there you. are going to be certain people who are going to, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. Right, but you and are assuming. this is that mile. There are, this there is people, there's professors. There are professors, so there are professors it's not who are saying that, that this assuming. is something. This yeah. is something that's actually <clears throat> happening right now. They've done TED Talks on it. I get that. I get that. But what you guys are missing is that the obvious existence of something does not mean the automatic acceptance of that thing. But they're going to scream it anyways. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But there's people out there. It's it's one of those. I mean, things. to they're, me, they're a child, the well-being of a child. Oh, I have the well-being of a child is a lot different from grown-ass adults going, "I'm sexually fluid." Okay, mm -hmm. so so again, what Kim said, when you do one thing, you you open Pandora's box. No, no. I you beg do. to differ. You well, are me, that is your perspective. Yes, because you are saying you are equating the fact of a child's well-being. To that of a grown adult, but we were to know, but they're there who will. it's not. But who they're are. not looking. It's they're not, not looking by at the child. Choice. They're not looking at the child. They're, they're looking, looking at the their grown right adult. To want to yes. okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you guys saying? Because what I don't understand what is, I, is I'm not saying that it's okay. It's I'm not okay. I, okay. I am not saying it's now. What if, she's now, saying now, is if that Monique that, is saying that she don't even like the, the idea of being with a woman, how you gonna think that I'm in agreement with a damn? I think Wrong what she's saying, man. and correct me if I'm wrong, yes. is that if you, if society as a whole accepts sexual fluidity mm -hmm. and it says it's okay for men to sleep with men or women to sleep with women or, and we're accepting of all of this. Please don't tell me what you're about to say. Let me please and a bunch of, there please is a please. slope that you go down. Is oh that, no! Is that what you're okay, saying? Okay, Zeke is there, Zeke is there, because you've been biting for a while. If we're going based on what you just said, I'm I'm sorry, I'm calling that complete horror. Bullshit! And that's my opinion, and I'm sorry I'm sticking with it, because it comes down to an example you gave. You're telling me that when you sin and say you're gay or you're some sort of different sexuality, you're a sinner, but that sin is higher. It's like we're lumping things in that shouldn't be lumped in together. There's like, I get it. There are certain slopes that come into it, but there are different lines that distinguish whether it is a viable topic. Because here's the thing. We're talking about sexuality between two adults, two, Grown two adults. consenting adults of certain right. age that is decided that's right. on their own. I would like to try this or I would like to do this. And this is mine. And that's we're going right. to come into this together. So. Monique's not trying to throw no, it all no, in no, as no, it's no, one. 
fine, but she's saying people are taking they're this, are using it to their advantage. But I, yes. I get it, but you can twist all you want, but there are certain lines, That's like we said, that are oh, boundaries. Absolutely agree. And I'm yes. not saying you don't agree, but the fact that that even comes into play where we're questioning the acceptance of either people's sexual fluidity or sexual orientation because it opens up the round for someone to be a pedophile and go take advantage of a child. That is a definite extreme, and it also allows mm-hmm. other people to stay ignorant or stay just intolerant of things of that That's nature right. because they're thinking, if I say yes to this, yes. I'm opening up the door for this shittery. Yeah, the door is open, but it doesn't mean you have to say, yes, this shit is okay. This but is not a PG it puts conversation. It on the table. Yeah. It does. No, it does not. I don't believe, I don't believe you can look at sexual fluidity and pedophilia as being two things on the table. Yes, okay, if we're talking about acceptance, sure, you can live in this world. And that is actually what we are talking about. Yeah, no but, one is saying that. But you have a choice. You have a choice. sexuality. And that was orientation. Not fluidity. That's not right. the acceptance of, of it. it. That's two different things. Like, also, pedophilia was not on the topic. We're talking about gro- so. To be clear, this topic is about sexual orientation in grown adults, as it relates to other grown adults, not as it relates to grown adults to kids. I don't see those as two realms, and I see acceptance as something that is individual. While guided by society and mores, it still is individual. Mm-hmm. But our discussion is about sexual fluidity for the point of grown adults so i mean i know we can't open the pandora's box because pandora's box is real deep and there's a lot of stuff in there but it's kind of like i feel that it is apples to oranges Mm -hmm. and i agree i think you know when it comes to gays and lesbians if you if a man wants to marry a man if a woman wants to marry a woman that's i i am a heterosexual i like men Mm -hmm. and you I am very much in the mindset you live and let live Mm -hmm. because what you're doing is not hurting me. No, absolutely not. And so, you know, it's, that's not a big deal. Or another individual. Let's put that out there. It's not hurting you or another individual because it's a fine line there too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always my answer at the end of the day. They don't answer to me. Yeah. Yeah. They answer to whoever they answer to. Yes. Yeah, Lana, jump on Yeah, I want to put something there and I want to go back to what Karee brought about the age of information Mm -hmm. and why, why the society has developed and is developing in the way it is because we have so much at our fingertips just like at any Mm -hmm. at your whim you can get you know access to anything that you ever thought of we still haven't learned how to gauge and digest all of this Mm -hmm. at the speed that it comes to us absolutely Uh, we also i mean it's a work in progress it's going to be learning experience because this is such a fresh and it's changing you know and and it's evolving that's that's working that's why i said it's work in progress so um we have, I mean, we all, we have certain moral guidance, mm-hmm. we have certain standards, but like this, the entire social media, all everything that dumps information at anybody who requests mm-hmm. it at any particular time also had created, create, not created, it's creating certain trends mm-hmm. that make certain things or in right now, yeah. mm-hmm. if and society has to learn if they have accepted it or not, or will they accept it? Mm-hmm. But I mean, uh, I I don't want to really go into detail about this. But like we're ju- we're just in the process of actually learning what we will accept and take and go on with, mm-hmm. and what is a byproduct of it. Mm-hmm. But it also goes into the immediate gratification on anything that we name in, in social media. A media period is blessing and the curse mm-hmm. it's blessing because it allows this information to flow and it's a curse because it allows this information oh, to flow it, it, mm-hmm. it's, it, that, that's all it is so but acceptance also doesn't mean it's either a you accept in whole mm-hmm. or you don't accept Mm-hmm. Or accept no, you, you get, get what I'm saying? It's like in, you can accept in parts. That's parts. right. That's yes. part of it. Too. Absolutely. Like you know, there's no, there's not an absolute. Uh, okay, if I accept this thing, that means I have to accept all of these other things. That's the, I don't think that's how it works. But that's and that's a part of the process to mm-hmm. to really learn. Okay, 
Okay, so we have this Pandora, let, let's just keep using the analogy, we have this Pandora box that mm -hmm. just keeps dumping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stuff out constantly. Do we just like absorb and digest oh. anything? We're going to explode, right. you know? No, That's we're right. just going to, I mean, but we're learning to what works and what's acceptable mm -hmm. and what just like by guys be by guns and... We, we will not, we would just like let this go and this maybe we'll put into, we'll, we'll look at it later pile, but like, so acceptance is a process also, mm -hmm. like everything is a process, mm -hmm. it's never like a solid state, a state that you gave to and you remain there, mm -hmm. because exactly. everything around you constantly moves and changes and, you, you know, goes in different directions, I mean, Humans discovered fire at a certain point. I mean, we, we're still using it now, I mean, but then later on we went into other sources of fuel, I'm just saying. <laughs> the, the world is not black and white. No, it's not. And no. people, people are, not are black definitely and white. not black and white. There is a lot of gray area. Mm -hmm. So yes. whether that means that you are sexually fluid, sexually curious, or you are sexually unfluid, <laughs> and... <clears throat> Whatever you are <laughs> is fine mm -hmm. as long as you are not hurting anybody else. Exactly. And or hurting yourself. I mean, God forbid yourself. you wouldn't be hurting yourself, but. There is know. a reason why private life is called is private. private. Yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah, but I feel like we are in this age where we're, you know, I mean, private now ain't so private no more. No. No. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice. Everybody wants a choice. Everybody wants a choice. It is a it's a choice that sometimes you can't even help. I mean, it's there. I mean, certainly you can turn off your phone, but... And you could choose not to be on social media. You could choose not to share everything. You could choose not to... Right? See it or see it. Yeah, I mean, how many of you guys have shared crazy reels with me? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being targeted right yeah, now. Shut up. Exactly. See? Shut it off. But yeah, they shut it off. are not personal reels of things that I'm doing in myself. Mm -hmm. but but that's it. right. But somebody else is doing them and we're consuming it and sharing it. And yeah, you enjoy again. everything and so I that's the Yes, thing. I do. That's yes, the I do. And she sends me crazy stuff too while she's right. over here. But no, and I was the first to say that I did, but that has nothing to do with what she said. It's a choice. So I'm choosing to send that to you. Yeah. I so nice. then that's what that's that's what she's saying while you're calling people out about <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you for joining this very lively conversation that we're having here on Girls Chat. We hope you will join us for the next episode. Leave any comments. We'd love to read your comments, questions, because and hear your thoughts. Because personally, I think that the, the idea and the topic of sexual fluidity, sexual orientation is something that as you are getting into a certain age, women over 35, it should be discussed more. And it should be discussed more without regard to your personal preference. And that's just, that's for me, that's just point blank. Because if we are women who are going to support other women, it's important for us to have discussions without lay in blame or without passing judgment on one person over the other, one thing being right or one thing being wrong, irregardless of race, irregardless of religion, irregardless of who you are. So we would love for you to share your thoughts with us. Topics. We love topics. Oh, and topics. Yes, there are things y'all want to hear and about. about. We love topics to discuss to talk about. That's right. Yes. Until next time. Bye. See you in the